We continue with this Sermon on the Mount today. We began it last week with the Beatitudes, and it will continue for the next several weeks of ordinary time. We're going to continue looking through the Sermon on the Mount. It gives us a little window into the preaching of Christ. When he went around preaching and teaching, we get to see the excerpts from it in the Sermon on the Mount. After giving us the Beatitudes, today he gives us these, this commandment to let our light shine before others, not letting it be put under a bushel basket or hidden, but that others may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. Now, spoiler alert, in this very same Sermon on the Mount, our Lord is also going to say, when you give charitably, do not blow the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the streets and the marketplaces, so that others may see them and praise them for their good works. But rather, when you give, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And your Father who sees in secret will reward in secret. It's the very same Sermon on the Mount that he gives us that command. And another spoiler alert, we're actually going to hear that reading on February 22nd, which is Ash Wednesday. So how are we to reconcile these two different Gospels? On the one hand, he says that we should let our light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. And on the other hand, he says, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Well, the answer to this comes in the intention. And our Lord does specify that in both of those passages. The reason why the hypocrites blow the trumpet before them when they're about to give something in charity is so that others may praise them. That's the goal. That's the intention. But here, he says, let your light shine before others that they may glorify your heavenly Father. That's the intention. What is interesting, what is revolutionary in this, is that it's the exact same action. But the very same action can have two very different results simply based on our intention, by what's going on inside of here. It's not just about doing, it's about being. Now, if you have grown up as Christian, you may take this for granted, but this is an absolutely revolutionary idea. Because in both circumstances, those who are genuine and those who are hypocrites, they're doing the exact same thing. They're accomplishing the exact same work, but to two different ends, simply based on what's in the heart. Our Lord also says, if the salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? I'd like to read from St. John Chrysostom, who has a really interesting reflection on this saltiness that we're called to be. He says this, It is not for you, then, to flatter and deal smoothly with men, but on the contrary, to be rough, and biting as salt is. When for thus offending men by reproving them, you are reviled, rejoice, for this is the proper effect of salt, to be harsh and grating to the depraved palate. Thus, the evil speaking of others will bring you no inconvenience, but rather will be a testimony of your firmness. I find it interesting that somebody named St. John Chrysostom would be saying these words about how sometimes when we speak truth, it will be rough and grating to the depraved palate. After all, Chrysostom means the golden mouthed, and he is titled such because he was known for his great rhetoric. So many people were drawn to listen to what he had to say. So he was not St. John the Silver-Tongued, where he is busy flattering people and trying to ingratiate himself to them, but rather St. John Chrysostom, Golden Mouth, 
because he speaks the truth even if, as he says, it is rough and grating on those with a depraved palate. Salt was used as a preservative, especially before the times of refrigeration. So when our Lord calls us to be light and salt, salt meaning to preserve our world and our culture from corruption, frequently this will mean that we will have to speak the truth loudly and boldly in the world in order to counteract the decay that is trying to reach into the culture. Oftentimes, this will be rough and grating to those with a depraved palate, and yet it is important to do. However, our intention is important. And so I kind of bring this back to what's going on in here when we are speaking the truth. Because just as when we give charity, we can be accomplishing the exact same work, but in one hand being genuine and the other hand being hypocritical, so too when we speak the truth. What is going on inside of here when we're saying what is true? Is it for the purpose of being rough and grating? Is it for the purpose of giving offense or for the purpose of being praised by others? Or is it for the purpose of persuasion and conversion? This is a question we have to ask ourselves when we are standing up for truth in the public sphere. We might be saying the correct thing, but we must always be aware of what's going on inside our hearts. In terms of preservation and salt being used for it, I have a good story about that. When I was in Chambersburg with Father Rodriguez, he would buy uh, something called bacalao, which is cod, but it was cod preserved with salt. And I had never seen this before. This cod was so seeped through with salt that it was like a rock. It was hard as a rock. Like he would hit it on the counter like this, and I mean, Literally, it was like a rock. So you couldn't just bite into it right away. The salt was there to preserve it, especially in the times before refrigeration. But even with all the salt in it, you just you couldn't, you couldn't eat it, unless you really like salt, I guess. But, I mean, it was, it was rock hard. So you would have to put it in a big vat of um, water and put it on low heat over the stove. And slowly, over time, the salt would leach out, and then eventually the cod would become palatable. Now, it was still the saltiest cod you've ever tasted, but eventually you could eat it. It wouldn't break your teeth when you're trying to do it. As a side note, there were several times when Father Rodriguez would turn on the thing, because you have to do it for a while. He'd turn on the stove, go upstairs, and then fall asleep, and then all the water would evaporate, and then the cod would burn at the bottom of the, of the pot. I have to go upstairs and wake him up. Um, but anyway, the, 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 the cod is not edible with all of that salt. It has to be leached first with water. I would say so too in our conversations whenever we are bearing witness to the truth. Our purpose, our intention should not be to be grating or in order to be biting. That's not the intention, even though that might be the result. Some people might take it the wrong way. But we must first at least try to leach some of the salt in order to make it palatable, in order to bring truth with charity. There's a difference between screaming truths at somebody and truly trying to persuade them because you want them to change. And I know the difference. I think we can all kind of tell the difference. You know, sometimes online I watch um, street apologetics and stuff like that, and there is a definite difference between some people who will try to provoke, right? Try to get reactions out of people in order to make sure that they get, you know, an interesting video so then they get more clicks on YouTube because, you know, somebody was yelling at them and going crazy and that's going to get all the, all the likes and all the clicks. Well, that's not the pure intention. The pure intention of speaking the truth is truly desiring the conversion of the other person. 
truly desiring to persuade because we know that God loves them and that when we live our life in accordance with the commandments, that is the truest and best way to happiness. That should be our intention when we are the salt of the earth, when we are trying to preserve our culture from decay by bearing witness to the truth, we must have that as our intention, the love of the other, the conversion of their souls, so that they too can come to know the amazing power of God that you and I have come to know. We share that with them, and we bear witness to the truth. Sometimes they'll throw it back in our face and get angry. We have to be willing to accept that because it hurts. But our intention when we speak the truth should be pure. And when it is, then we are truly the salt of the earth, the city set on the hill, and the light on the lampstand that fills the whole house. <laughs>